OK, let's return now to the war in the Middle East, where the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, says that Israel will expand its ground offensive in Gaza in the coming days. Mark Regev is a senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister and joins us now. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us uh, today. Really appreciate uh, you taking, taking the chance. All right, uh, Mark, what was the target that was struck in the Al-Mughazi refugee camp? We're still looking into that incident because we know that there are reports of, of people being killed and the army is looking into that. I don't have more to share with you while the investigation is long going. I can only reiterate that Israel does not target civilians. Our target is Hamas and Hamas's military machine. And we will, as the prime minister said today, we will continue to dismantle that military machine. It poses a threat to our people. It was responsible for the terrible massacre of Israelis on October 7th when they beheaded, they burnt people alive, they raped, uh, they massacred, uh, uh, they killed parents in front of their children and children in front of their parents, and of course they abducted some 250 Israelis to Gaza. For all those reasons, we have to pursue our mission. Absolutely, and those Hamas crimes are unspeakable, but it's a refugee camp, isn't it, Mark, that was hit, and some 106 people are known to have been killed now. Do you expect to find that there were Hamas fighters? hiding there. So once again, this specific incident, we're, we're looking into exactly what happened. But unfortunately, you have Hamas across civilian neighborhoods. You have Hamas uh, under hospitals. You've had them under schools, even under UN facilities. Hamas, as the UK government has said, as the European Union has said, as the United States has said, has a deliberate strategy of embedding itself in the civilian population deliberately using Gaza civilians as a human shield for its machine. So you should have no uh, surprises whatsoever in hearing that Hamas would be using Gazan civilians, including in a refugee camp, uh, for, its, uh, for its war machine. And, of course, I I'm sure that you, um, as you say, do not want to be targeting civilians. But, Mark, it's not just the airstrikes, is it? Israeli soldiers are now dying as well, right. an increasing number. 14 died overnight. Is there increasing concern now that the, the Israeli casualty count of those fighting is, is ticking up to an unacceptable level? Well, you're right. Every day I wake up in the morning and I see on the front page of my newspaper the pictures of the Israeli fatalities, the combat fatalities uh, over the previous day, and our hearts go out to their families. And though the price is high, and, and we don't want to see any of our uh, young men or women in, 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 in the military uh, to pay the ultimate price. Of course, we're very sad and, and uh, every time it happens. But there's an understanding in Israel that this is a job that must be done. Uh, this is a, a, an understanding that encompasses, I think, the overwhelming majority of Israeli society from right to left and everyone in between. Look, we can't continue to live with this terror enclave on our southern border. You know, the Hamas leadership say openly, uh, they say that they would do the October 7th massacre again, and again and again. That's their words, not mine. They say that they believe in a state of permanent war with Israel. Once again, their words, not mine. We have to end their rule over Gaza, and that won't just be good for Israelis who won't have to live in fear of terrorists crossing the border and butchering their children in the middle of the night, but that'll ultimately good for be good for Palestinians in Gaza who yeah. deserve better than this terrible terrorist regime. And Mark, you're, you're probably right to say that most Israelis do want you to, to finish this job and remove Hamas from there. But it's not all Israelis who are happy with the way that is, the IDF is prosecuting this war. Just uh, in the last few hours, earlier this weekend, there were families of those hostages, some 129 still held by Hamas, who were heckling uh, and booing the Prime Minister in the Knesset. We've got a little bit of sound of that, Mark, if you can just hold on a moment while we play that through, and then you can respond to that. So, Mark, look, that pressure is increasing it from those families of, of hostages, people who are still being held, for the IDF to perhaps choose a different way of prosecuting this war. So, of course, we can't, we can't but help but empathise with the families. They're going through a living hell. Uh, their loved ones are being held by a brutal terrorist organization. And as we spoke a moment ago, we, we saw the sort of atrocious, uh, uh, terrible violence, horrific violence that Hamas is capable of. We saw that on October 7th. And the, the large group of over 100 hostages who were released in, in November through, through a, 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 an arrangement that was 
negotiated with the help of the Americans, the Egyptians and the Qataris, uh, the people who came back have, have started to talk and they, they talk of, of, of intense physical and psychological abuse. So, of course, the families are going through a very difficult time and they are, they are, they are uh, consumed, and rightly so, about the fate of their loved ones being held by these brutal, bloodthirsty terrorists. So where are we with a ceasefire? You'll know that the Egyptians have suggested something today or in the last day or so of a ceasefire that would see Hamas give up power. That's been rejected by Hamas. But the suggestion was that there'd be some kind of Palestinian government that would run uh, Gaza after the fighting is over. Are we seeing the, the outlines of what the day after this could look like? So my, my prime minister wrote a piece that's in the Wall Street Journal uh, on their website. and It'll be in the print edition tomorrow after Christmas. Uh, and he talked about what we require when this is over, uh, what, it, what happens on the day after. So first of all, Hamas must be destroyed, because as long as Hamas is there, you can't get anything good done. Uh, that's the first precondition. We have to win the war. We have to destroy Hamas. But then he talks about we want to see a demilitarized and a de-radicalized Gaza. Demilitarized, de-radicalized. Gaza should not threaten Israel anymore. And this sort of extremist, hateful ideology that Hamas represents can no longer be allowed to govern Gaza. We have to see a new situation. As I said a moment ago, that's good for Israelis, that's good for Palestinians too. Uh, Mark, 11 weeks of war and you're no closer to having full control of Gaza. You're not going to be able to destroy Hamas in its entirety. So you have to start thinking about another way of bringing peace to the region, not just for the Palestinians in Gaza, but also, of course, for those Israelis living uh, across the country and on the border. That's our goal, to bring peace. And we have to have patience. Uh, Hamas's uh, military but how, but how machine... how much longer? Because the Prime Minister, as you, as you know, said that this is just going to continue. How much longer do you think this is going to go on for? As long as it takes. But there are good signs. Uh, we're seeing the, uh, the Hamas military machine in northern Gaza Strip start to crack. We've seen increasing numbers of Hamas terrorists voluntarily surrender. We're seeing their tunnel network. We're destroying that slowly. That will happen in the south a bit later because we started our operation later. But we're beginning to see them starting to break, their machines starting to crack. How I much think do you, victory... Sorry, Mark, we don't have loads of time left, but how much of Gaza do you think you hold, confidently hold? No, I, I, at the moment I'm more confident about the north, less so about the, the, the south. We've got more serious fighting ahead of us in the, in the south. But we will win this. And you know why we'll win this? We'll win it because we don't have a choice. We just cannot afford our people refuse to live next to this terror enclave on our southern border. For us, it's, it's not a matter of choice. We have mm -hmm. to get this job done if we want yeah. to keep our people safe. And Mark, wh when you win this, will there be a, a Palestinian state afterwards? President Biden has said that the Palestinians deserve a state. Uh, your ambassador to the UK just recently on Sky News said that there can be no Palestinian state after this. What's your so, opinion? What are you telling the Prime Minister right now? So the Prime Minister is telling me that he believes in a solution where the Palestinians have all the powers to rule themselves and none of the powers to harm Israel. And that second part of the formula, none of the powers to harm Israel, is all so important after what we saw that happened October 7th. That's the, that's the foundation for peace with the Palestinians. They should have all the powers to rule themselves, but none of the powers to hurt us. If we can reach an agreement based on those principles, that's really good. OK, Mark Rego, really appreciate speaking to you this evening and thank you very much for the time. Thanks for having me, sir. Thanks, sir.